This program is brought to you by Emory University. In a special issue on the legacy of civil rights, Emory Magazine shines a spotlight on African American culture and life. We spoke with Randall Burkett, curator of the university's African American collection. It's housed in the Manuscript, Archives, and Rare Book Library. Dr. Burkett is also co-editor of Black Biography, 1790 to 1950, and associate editor of the Harvard Guide to African American History. In the past 12 years, he has had a hand in attracting many of the collection's most public acquisitions. And that includes the archives of Alice Walker, the library of Carter G. Woodson, and archives from the Southern Christian Leadership Conference. The primary focus of what we've been acquiring are materials that were created within and for the African American community. We're trying to get the African American voice represented in the collections. Randall Burkett says the collection not only offers items from this world, but also from beyond. These are the papers of Mamie Wade Avant, who was a fortune teller in Savannah in the 20s and 30s and 40s. And it's a small collection, but we have something that's very rare, and that is the actual formulas by which she would work to heal a relationship or uh, to, to cure a physical ailment. These, these are formulas that were not to be written down, but she did write some of these down. And we also have her crystal ball. And I don't know how many libraries have a crystal ball. Maybe there are quite a few, but. But it's his latest find that has Burkett excited. We've got hundreds, hundreds of books in this library. It's just a, a treasure trove. The library, papers, and photographs had belonged to Cedric Dover. He was a scientist and author living in England. Dover knew the biggest names of the Harlem Renaissance movement and worked with many of them while writing his own book, American Negro Art. These are some of the books that, that we got. This is uh, in a part of the collection. This is uh, Langston Hughes' The Ways of White Folk. And uh, this book, as you can see, has a, a photograph of Dover with Langston Hughes. And w one of the things that was really, uh, that's distinctive about this library is that Dover would often tip in photographs. Sometimes there will be a, a book review in the back or, or uh, and, and a, some kind of annotation about his association with the author or his regard for the book. Dover was very much a leftist. and He was a very close friend of W.E.B. Du Bois, who was also a leftist. Here is a copy of, his, of Du Bois's uh, book, uh, The Negro, and this has a portrait of Du Bois here. He's used little bits of tape. It's signed by Du Bois and inscribed to Dover. And Dover then makes a little comment. I first read this book in Calcutta when I was 15 or so. It affected me profoundly. This is Zora Neale Hurston's um, very important book, Mules and Men. And here is a, a photograph of Zora Neale Hurston and this is at the New York Times Book Fair in uh, 1938. So you get this lovely photograph of Zora Neale Hurston uh, that's actually taped in. Never, never use scotch tape in connection with the book. We're sorry that Mr. Dover did that. He also wrote these sort of incisive comments about the authors or about the book. He made, had definitive judgments about writers. Here's what he says about uh, Hurston. Zora Neale Hurston is a vivid, charming woman, though overgiven to feuds and questions of priority. She was a favorite student of Franz Boas and could have become a great anthropologist, but was seduced too early by the American partiality for literary or popularized anthropology. Interest in Hurston ultimately belied Dover's judgment, and now she's widely read. By her death, she was impoverished and forgotten and alone. Uh, she was buried in an unmarked grave. And, and in a final tale about links of the past and their connection to Emory, Dr. Burkett reminds us who was mainly responsible for bringing Zora Neale Hurston back. So here's the receipt. Oh. Merit Monument Company, $270.66. Oh, that was in 1970. That was a good bit of change it then. It was, yeah. Yes. Alice Walker famously located the grave and put a marker on her grave.
The preceding program is copyrighted by Emory University.